Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamisha, also known as Mrs. Coda. So today I'm going to be talking about group therapy. So I'm going to give you 22 group therapy ideas that you can use right now in your session. All right. And there's also a bonus at the end. So be sure that you watch this video completely to the end and then you'll see um, the bonus that I have for you guys. All right. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Number one is car transfer. So it really depends on your facility, um, but you can use your own personal car to do transfers with, or you can pretty much pretend you can kind of make a scenario in your clinic and you can do um, car transfer training. That would be an awesome group. Number two would be a home exercise program group. So you can actually have your group, it could be two, four, six, however many people are in your group that's planning for discharge. So you can actually do a home exercise group where you kind of just go over home, you know, I would say the basic home exercises for um, your clients and you kind of guide them through the exercises. And then if they have any questions, that's the perfect time for them to ask. Number three is your exercise strength training group. So again, um, depending on how many people you have in your group and you also want to take their um, level of ability into consideration. Someone might be able to use a two pound dumbbell, whereas someone else might be able to use a five pound dumbbell. Um, so you're just going to take them through, you know, basic exercises, keep it simple. Um, you can do elbow flexion. You could do some shoulders, you know, just basic exercises that you're, you're doing, um, day to day. Number four would be chair yoga. So if you're not familiar with yoga, I would just say either Google it or YouTube chair yoga. And this can be a great, and, and again, keep things simple. Like if you're not very good with chair yoga, you don't know too much about it. I wouldn't be doing all extensive stuff, but just keep it sweet and simple. You can do uh, chair yoga. This is great for stretching and your patients will probably really enjoy it. Also keep in mind, you know, their level, their um, ability level is something you would want to consider. Number five would be proper body mechanics training. So this would be great for doing lifting tasks. So let's say if you're lifting um, items off of the floor, let's say an item dropped on the floor, you can go over, okay, what is the scenario if there is a clothing on the floor? And then you would actually put a clothes on the floor and then you have one person um, pick up the, the item off the floor and then the group can say, okay, you have to use this. You can have, you have, you have to use that. And then the next person, um, you can have them maybe picking, using a basket and, and moving a basket from one side of the counter to the next side of the counter. And then again, the group can say, okay, this is what you have to do for that particular brother mechanics. And then let's say if you have a, another person, maybe moving something from a counter overhead, the group can say, okay, proper body mechanics would be A, B, and C. If you don't want to have each individual person do a particular activity in that group, you can actually be the person that's doing it. And then they can tell you um, what you should and should not do. I know I used this in a group before and I made sure I did things incorrectly so they can correct me on the proper body mechanics to make sure I was doing it right. Number six would be kitchen um, mobility. Okay, so you're doing kitchen mobility and your focus is really functional mobility within the kitchen. This would be a great group, um, especially with clients that you feel comfortable with. Um, you may need a aid with this just for kind of backup safety, but um, you kind of have them walk through the kitchen, maybe open and close the cabinet, open and close the refrigerator, open and close the microwave, open and close the stove. Uh, or if you don't have a helper and you don't feel comfortable with multiple people uh, moving at the same time, you can kind of just do it one after the next. So let's say you have them lined up. First person goes, does the mobility with you. They go back and they sit down, then the next person and so on. So you really have to judge how you're going to do your groups when it's just you by yourself. And you want to also always think about safety. Okay, so this number seven, I feel like every single um, practitioner is currently using in a skilled nursing facility, and that's ball toss. You can do a ball toss group, either have your clients uh, all seated or you can have maybe one or two that's standing, depending if you are doing this activity with PT. And um, they're obviously they're billing towards 
dynamic balance for just maybe just one-on-one that they have in their session, and then you're billing with their group. Um, but you got to be careful with that because if you are doing a group with that particular client and PT has them at the same time, there's some stipulations for that. So you just want to make sure that that person is, you're, you're supposed to see that person for a group and PT also has them individual for themselves. So, um, I'll probably be talking a little bit more specifically on like rules and regulations of PDPM as well as group, but just know that shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be an issue, especially if that person is participating in your group at the same time. Um, but yeah, we'll talk a little bit more of that in detail because that, that's a good topic to cover. Number eight is upper body and lower body dressing. Um, so this is an ADL group. Um, definitely check out this video that I have right here on how to perform this with multiple people. I do not expect you guys to be having your patients like get undressed or something. No, that would be crazy. So I actually used um, TheraBand to do that. So definitely take a look at that video and you can see how you can incorporate upper body and lower body dressing in your group. Okay, so number nine would be a stand tolerance group. Um, now, you can do so many different stuff with stand tolerance. You could do something at tabletop. I know in the past I did... Um, like playing checkers, the actual board game checkers with a client and I timed it and that was so much fun. Um, you can also do painting, you can do drawing, you can do a card game. I did that with a patient before we did like card games. Um, again, if you're doing this in a group setting, you're probably going to want everybody to be, um, I would say you want to have like an aid or you want to make sure that if you're doing a group, a stand tolerance group, your group is probably two to three max, um, just because you want to um, make sure that the people that are standing are safe to stand for a period of time. You want to gauge these folks. So again, either have a helper, have somebody stand by for safety, um, definitely have a chair behind that person. So if they're cognitively there and they can they can verbalize to you, you know what, Tamisha, I'm getting tired. I need to sit down. They can easily sit down. And then once they sit, so let's say if you're doing this group with three or four people, let's just say we'll add on an extra fourth person and you're comfortable with these people knowing that they're okay to stand, even though let's say maybe one or two can stand without a walker, I would still put a walker in front of them and I would still put a chair behind them. So let's say um, one person sits down, then what you would do is you would mark the time that they sit. And you could just tell them, hey, go ahead, sit down, rest. And you continue to allow everybody else um, to continue your activity. You could also put a time on the activity. Let's say um, they have like 10 minutes or maybe five minutes to do the particular activity. And let's say one person sits down at two minutes. The other person sits down at three minutes and 15 seconds. Um, and then the other people make it to five minutes. Those are how you can um, be able to document how they did in their stand tolerance activity. Number 10 is wheelchair rally race. Um, it is just like what it sounds like. Um, so, and this is so funny because I did this um, at work before and I had so many people just like, just stopping and just watching. <laughs> Cause I, I just, I'd be going all out guys sometimes. I'd just be going all out. Um, anyway, let me get to it. So with the wheelchair rally race is literally you're working on wheelchair mobility. So they have goals on wheelchair mobility. You you round up your people. Let's say you have four people in the group. Um, the first two, they're I mean they're pushing. You you can have a line going between or whatever you want to do, and you can have a start and end point. Once they cross that line, the other people on the other end they start wheeling over. Or you can even have it where you have them actually have a cone because I've used a cone and I had them have a cone in their lap or cone tucked in their wheelchair and they're like rolling to get to the end. And then they take the cone, they hand it to the other person. The other person is rolling to the other end. And it's so much fun. It's such a fun group, guys. So that's that's a great I, um, idea. So that's number 10. Number 11 is uh, balloon tennis. So balloon tennis is um, having your racket and you're just hitting um, that balloon back and forth. Um, you can have maybe two people lined up and two people lined up or three or three on three. If you have uneven numbers, that's fine. You can do maybe two with you and then the other three and you guys are just hitting the balloon back and forth. Um, and then if it goes, you know, out, you run and you grab it and you sit back down, you continue. This is a good um, group for dynamic sitting, functional, 
functional reach, activity tolerance, so you can really be creative. Number 12 is tug of war group. Now, I will say this with caution because I did do this before and I made sure I had a helper with this group. So with this particular um, activity, yes, you're going to have a rope and yes, you're going to have a middle point. And what you're doing is, and I did this with my um, group where they were seated and they actually had to pull the rope. Now, I did have a helper, so I was with one person behind them, just making sure they don't like fly out their wheelchair or anything crazy happens, but they loved it. And I also had a helper to make sure they didn't like completely smash and collide into each other. They absolutely loved it. So I did it um, in the group, and the focus was functional reach, trunk control, um, posture, it, strength. I mean, there were so many things we were working on, but it was just a fun group. Number 13 is make a sandwich group. This is great for meal prep. Um, the women, even the men, they love this group because um, you get to eat. So we literally will make a sandwich and then we will eat it after. And it's just such a fun group. Number 14 is adaptive equipment group. So this is a great group when you are working on adaptive equipment, such as a reacher, um, and what I've done in the past is I would actually like spread out bean bags and um or whatever you want. It doesn't have to be bean bags, but I'm just using that as an example. And you would just instruct them to pick up the bean bag and put it into like maybe like a little bucket that's next to them or or something close by. And to make this fun in a group is you can time it. So you could put different things on the floor and you can say, Hey, okay, use your reacher and whoever gets the most um, bean bags maybe wins, or you don't even have to make it a competition. You can just do an activity like that. So number 15 is fall recovery. So what I've done it with this one is this is usually meant for, um, more higher level, um, patients, especially if they're getting ready to return home and they have a history of falls or whatnot. What I would do is I would do a demonstration of the proper recovery off of the floor. And then one by one, I would do it with them. Um, I would make sure I get a return demonstration, or if you're not comfortable doing that, you can just, um, demonstrate and then you can have a discussion about fall recovery. Okay. So then number, where was I guys? I forgot. Number 16. So you can do a fall prevention group. So the last one I mentioned about fall recovery, now you can do a fall prevention. So with fall prevention, you can actually, um, just, this could just be a discussion group and you can actually give them a handout and you guys talk about ways to prevent falls at home. Number 17 is a decoloring group. This is another discussion group. Um, or you can make it interactive. You could put a whole bunch of things, um, like in a particular space and they can point out, okay, that needs to be removed. This needs to be removed. That shouldn't be there. You know, you can make it interactive like that, or you can just kind of talk about ways to, to declutter. This is a good group for, um, preparing for community integration, um, return to home, discharge group, all of that good stuff. Number 18 is your tech group. OK, so we are living in a world where technology is booming and um, our seniors need to be a little bit more advanced for the technology. So you can do a cellular um, manipulation group. This can be your tech group where everybody shows up with their cell phones and then you work on um, calling or you work on adding contacts to the phone um, you work on, um, adding like where their pharmacy or doctor or how to get in touch with their doctor, stuff like that. Or you, you know, you could be creative It's a cell phone. So those are some things that you can work on as well. Number 19 is your kitchen safety group. So I, what I've done in the past is I actually created hazards in the kitchen and then people in the group would have to point out those hazards. So that would be a really cool activity. You can be really creative with this. You can even, I've gone as far as putting water on the floor. Obviously nobody's walking to it, but you know, um, not a lot, just a little bit enough to where I can like easily clean it up. But these are just, um, activities that you can do guys in your group. Number 20 is your holiday theme group. I think some of us totally miss this kind of group because we're so wrapped up in everything we have to do. But let's say if it's Christmas season, you can do a Christmas season theme group. Um, maybe you're decorating the 
a rehab tree or something like that, or, or, you know, be creative. If it's a holiday, use it. Number 21 is your dance group. I have so much fun with this because I love to dance. This is so much fun. You put music on and you literally just let them rock out and you just dance. And you can even create like a whole little dance sequence where you're like, put your hands up and, you know, move right, move left. You could just make it so much fun. And trust me, it there's always a way to document function with stuff like this. And number 22, you can do indoor or outdoor planting. This is super fun, especially for summertime. You could take your group outside and you guys can just plant. Um, You can, you know, I think you can either go to the dollar store or maybe Home Depot and you can get the little small like plant cups or whatever. Or you can just grab some dirt and bring in your own cup and there you go. So it's really your budget and what you'd like to do. But this would be an awesome group. And this is number 22. So here is the bonus. I have group therapy for the everyday occupational therapy practitioner. This is a step-by-step -step guide on group therapy as well as um, ideas and activities. So I provide you with a PDF. It is step-by-step. -step. And it helps you to have a successful group and it also help you on developing your group, how to document your group. Um, it's so easy, guys. And it's a printable version of it. You can print it and you can reuse it and you can kind of keep a binder of all your group ideas. And it's, it's going to make such a difference because before you know it, instead of having 22, you're going to have 50 and 100 and you're going to have like options. Okay. So definitely go ahead, um, check the description below. I will put the, um, information there where you can get access to it. You simply just need to go to my store, but I'll make sure I'll just highlight that one. So you know exactly where to retrieve it. So I hope that this is helpful. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. All right, and make sure you come back again next week for my next video uh, where I'm going to be talking about um, going through the six part multiple choice for an MBCOT exam. So I'm going to break those down with you guys live. All right, take care, guys. Have a good one.